So first up, you write down this problem, and then we can actually use this box that's pictured in order to multiply out that problem. So you'll notice that the first thing that we do, if I'm going to try to use the box to multiply this out, is I write the first set of parentheses along the top, and then the second set of parentheses goes down the side. And then in order to fill it in, I'm going to fill in each square with the product of the column and the row headers for that particular cell. So for instance, in this top left one, I'm going to do 2x times 3x, which is 6x squared. Then for the next one, over, I'm going to do 5 times 3x. So 5 times 3x, 5 times 3 is 15, so it's going to be 15x. Okay, bottom left now, this one's going to be 2x times a negative 4. So 2x times negative 4 gives us a negative 8x. And then for our final square here, this one's going to be 5 times a negative 4. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. Now this hopefully seems somewhat familiar. Uh, there's actually a, a fancy multiplication method that uses a similar idea. Uh, some of you also might have seen this, I believe, in chemistry, the pundit squares. Same kind of an idea is that. Now we can then use that to multiply this out. So what that tells me is that that factored form that we started with equals 6x squared plus 15x minus 8x minus 20. And of course, I need to combine the like terms. So we end up getting 6x squared plus 7x minus 20 for the final answer. You'll find that middle term ends up being really critical in terms of how we get there. Uh, we're going to be using this box to see how we can actually take something that looks like this at the start of the problem, the expanded form, and actually factor it into something that looks like this. You notice this problem in terms of factoring it is different from the ones that we've been doing so far. The ones we did last week, if I gave you 6x squared, you were going to factor it by first factoring that 6 out of every term. Notice we can't do that with these. That's going to be the theme of the day. And while you could have expanded this without using the box, we're going to use the box a couple times here just to get used to it so then we can use it going the other direction, which is going to be the whole purpose of it. So having seen that first one done, this one's very similar, go ahead and use the box there to multiply this out. So we start filling this one in. In our first box, we're going to do 4x times x, which is 4x squared. And the box next to that is going to be x times negative 1, which is negative 1x, which I'm just going to write as negative x. If you chose to write as negative 1x, that's perfectly fine. It's not the final answer so it doesn't have to be perfectly simplified. But just remember, be in that habit. Then, uh, bottom left box, 8 times 4x, that's going to give us 32x. And then 8 times the negative 1 gives us negative 8. So then, when we expand this out, we know that we get 4x squared minus x plus 32x minus 8. Combine the like terms, 4x squared plus 31x minus 8 is our expanded form all the way multiplied out. Now the fun of these get to be where we start seeing stuff like this, where we're actually going to have to start going backwards for part of it. So copy down this picture and fill in, please, what two numbers are going to be along the top and what two numbers are missing from those boxes down below. So you're going to be filling in four unknowns. All right, so filling this in, we have a lot of clues that we can go based on. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the numbers at the top first because I know this is going to be 6x squared and I get that by multiplying something by 6x. Well, 6x times what would give us 6x squared? X. x. All right, so we know that one's got to be an x. All right, then, in order to get the number that goes up here, we can be saying, okay, the 12x. 6x times what is 12x? 2. Two. Okay, so then... I filled in the top. Having done that, I can now fill in the two boxes along the bottom. So x times 7 gives me 7x, and 2 times 7 gives me 14. So there we can see how we can kind of put it together with parts of that information. But we can even take this entirely backwards. 
Here you have the box filled in. Please fill in what the outside along the left and the top will be that gives us that on the inside. All right, so in order to fill those in, the easiest way that I think about it at least is in terms of factoring. So like if I want to know what this number is out here, it's got to be something that multiplied into both 8x squared and 12x. So let's factor 8x squared and 12x. Uh, what can I divide both 8 and 12 by? 4. Four. Yeah. And I got an x squared and an x in both of them, so there must have been an x out here as well. Knowing that then, 4x times what is 8x squared? 2x. Okay, let's take a look then at the 12x over here. 4x times what is 12x? 3. three. three. And for our last one then, we can be looking at in terms of, well, 2x times what is 6x, for instance. Three, three. Ends up being 3. You could also have been looking at in terms of 3 times what is 9, or you could have just said what factors out of both of those terms. Of course, for all of them. Let's do one more practice that direction. Please fill in the outside of this box. All right. So let's go ahead and fill in the outside of this one. I'm going to do this one entirely thinking about in terms of factoring. So the left side there. Well, that would be whatever I can take out of 10x squared and 3x. Well, there's nothing that comes out of 10 and 3. But I can take out an x at least. So we're just going to have a plain old x there. Then, uh, let's factor the bottom row. 20x and 6. Uh, what can I divide them both by? 2. So then that'll be a 2 there. Okay. Then uh, let's factor our first column. 10x squared and 20x. It looks like I could pull out a 10x there. And finally our last column, 3x and 6. Looks like I can pull out a 3 out of both of those. And so then check each box. Make sure it all looks correct. But yes, 10x times x is 10x squared. 3 times x is 3x. 20 times 10x is 20x, and 2 times 3 gives us our 6, so that's all looking good. Now, this has all been kind of the warm-up, getting used to the box and how it gets used. Now it's time for us to start actually using it to factor. So, please write down this quadratic and draw yourself a box that we'll be using. Alright, so in order to factor this one, we're going to use the box method here, so this is all about how to use the box method. Notice I have to use box method because I cannot divide the 11 out of every term. That's how we know to use box method. When setting up your box, we're going to put the first term of our quadratic in the first, the top left square, and we're going to put the last term of our quadra quadratic in the bottom right square. So our quadratic is going to have 11x squared in the top left and a 6 in the bottom right. Go ahead and make sure you have that written in on yours. And our whole goal is to figure out what are those numbers going to be around the outside. In order to figure it out, we got to deal with that 35x. And this is where it gets a little trickier. Those two diagonal numbers are going to have to add to 35x. Just like when we did the add to multiply two problems with factoring quadratics before, there is only one combination that's going to allow this to happen. So, we need to start looking to see what that combination will be. So let's start playing with some things. Now, one of the things that leaps out to me here as I look at this problem, one of those strategies you can use for doing these, is that 11x squared. 11 is prime. The only way to get 11x squared is to multiply the 11 and a 1. And we're going to make it 11x and 1x. So I'll do 11x on the top, and I'll do an x on the left. Just so you know, if I wanted to put the 11x on the left and the x on the top, that would have been perfectly fine. There's nothing that tells me it has to be one way or the other at this point. All right, now, what goes with the 6? Well, there's different ways to multiply to 6. We can do 1 times 6, or we can do 2 times 3. And I'm walking you through the whole process here. Just so you know, you will be faster on these very quickly, but i got to show you the full thought process on these first couple problems. 
So if I'm looking to see what multiplies to 6, I'm going to say, okay, well, let's try something. Let's try 6 and 1 first. So I'll try 6 and 1. And then you do this in pencil. Do not do this part in pen or you're going to create a quite ugly mess because there's some trial and error involved. I'm going to see what that would give me. So 11x times 1 would give me 11x, and x times 6 would give me 6x. If I add those two together, I get 17x. Not what I wanted. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch where the 6 and the 1 are. Because by switching where the 6 and the 1 are, I'm going to change which of those numbers gets multiplied by the 11. So switching them, even though we're multiplying, switching them can have an impact in terms of what the results will be. All right, so then I check that one. So x times 1 is going to just be x. 11x times 6 is 66x. If I add those, I get 67x. Still not at all useful. Okay. So then, now we need to clear that out. I need a bigger cursor for doing that. All right. Since 6 and 1 did not work, now we're going to go over to 2 and 3. So let's try 2 and 3 now. So let's go like that. Let's see what happens with this one. Okay, so x times 3 will give me 3x. 11x times 2 will give me 22x. 22x plus 3x is 25x. Great. Still not what I wanted. So... Have you figured out now what we do next? I'm going to switch them, yeah. yeah that's right. I've got to do it this way now. Okay, so let's switch those out. Got to get a bigger eraser on this thing. You're going to do a lot of erasing, although we will talk here in a little bit about how we'll be able to do this without having to do quite as much trial and error. All right, so now let's put the 2 here and the 3 here and see what happens. So 2 times x gives me 2x. 11x times 3 gives me 33x. If I add those together, I do, in fact, get 35x, which means is the result. That's what we were looking for. So having done that, I now can write the factored form because I can get the first parentheses reading across the top and then the second parentheses reading down the left side. And so that is our factored form, x plus 3 times 11x plus 2. And again, the order doesn't matter. You could write this as 11x plus 2 times x plus 3. That would be perfectly fine. The part that does matter is the 11 has to be in the same parentheses with the 2. And the x has to be in the same parentheses with the 3. That's the part that does matter. I'd now like you to try doing that process on your own with this one. So write down the problem, set up the box, and go ahead and work it through. And I'll be checking in regularly as you do so to give little pointers in case you get hung up on any one step. So remember your first step, first term in the first box, last term in the last box. So that's what your setup should be looking like. And then you use that trying to figure out what can those other two boxes be that will add to a 2x? And you'll notice in this case, we're multiplying to a negative 7. So there's going to be a positive and a negative. That's why that middle number is going to be so low. All right, so when you go and now go hunting for the right combination, let's talk about some strategies you can use. In the last one, I started by saying 11x squared, I could know what that was going to give me. In this case, the 7 is my friend. Because 7 is a prime number. So I know that there's going to be a 7 times a 1. Knowing that off the top is nice because it really cuts down the amount of things we got to check. Uh, what I don't know yet, though, is since this is a negative 7, I don't know which one is going to be a positive 7 or a negative 7. So one of these is going, to be have to, is going to have to be negative. I just don't know which one yet. All right. 
So then, now comes in the trial and error. So I say, okay, what multiplies to 9x squared? And the first thing that jumps to most of our minds is 3 times 3. So let's try the 3x times the 3x. If I do that, and I'm actually going to try them out here, so that gives me 21x and 3x. Now, one of those will have to be negative by the time all is said and done, but I don't know which yet. But if, if, that, negative, if that 3 was negative, that still gave us 18. And this one, then, that didn't work. So the 3x and the 3x, then I just ruled it out. Because even if I switch their position, it's still the same thing, because they both were the same. So, so much for 3x and 3x. So then, I guess it's got to be a 9 and a 1. That's the only other way to get 9x squared. So the question is, where's the 9 go? Now, you got two options at a point like this. One option is you can say, well, I'm just going to guess one and see what it gives me, and if it's wrong, I'll switch them. That's perfectly fine. But if you rely on that entirely, as long as you're doing these, you're going to spend longer than you have to, because there's some clues that we can see that will help us to know. For instance, if I multiply this 7 by 9, that's going to give me a nice big number. And then that would mean I was doing 1 times 1 here. I'm trying to find two numbers here that are just two apart. I should not have a huge number and a small number here. I should have two numbers that are pretty close together. So that tells me I don't really want to multiply the 7 by the 9 here. So I'm instead going to plan on having the 9 go this direction. And that's the way I'm going to check it. So now let's check and see what we get. So that gives me 7x and then 9x times 1 gives me 9x there. And remember one of these has to be negative. They will give me 2 here. In order for them to be positive 2, that means I have to have more positives than negatives. So that means the 9x has to be positive. In order for the 9x to be positive, that means the 1 has to be positive. The 7 is the negative then. Which means this minus 7x is a negative. And so they add to a positive 2x. Therefore, we can know our factored form. We got our box. Read the factored form from across the top, and down the left side, there's your final factored form for this problem. A little bit more in-depth than the ones you've done before, and just like when doing the regular factoring quadratics, it'll probably take a little while to get really good at them, but the more you practice, the faster they get, and the faster they get, of course, the easier they are as well. So. Your homework is going to be practicing the box method. It's just going to be focusing on actually the boxes themselves so that we can then transition into the factoring side.